I'm sorry, I have to restart the yeah. camera. Okay. So, this is the James Bond panel. Oh, nice. Way. Yeah, don't touch that one. Yeah. That's the emergency ejector seat. <laughs> Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. Another year, another CES. You know, last year autonomous vehicles made a huge splash, and this year, we're here to see how far they've come. All right, so we're here with Max, the VP of Marketing and Partner at Induct. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. So we're here to show uh, Navia. It's actually the first fully driverless vehicle commercially available. It's fully electric. It's made for public transport, so business areas, university campuses, airports, theme parks. Okay, so walk me through the experience. Uh, once you get in, you have a touch screen. You choose your stop. This is kind of like uh, being on an elevator that's moving laterally. You can walk around, you can high five everybody, get everybody pumped up for the day. Let's go, let's do business. I feel like I'm rowing. Tell me a little bit about the technology of how this works. Okay, so it works with lasers, one at each corner. Okay. So the vehicle can see all around it. The laser detects any obstacle, vehicles, cyclists, pedestrians. And you guys don't use GPS? No, we don't use GPS. Uh, it's not accurate. You can't drive inside. If you have a tunnel, you get, you get lost. And also, if you want a, a very good GPS, it's very expensive. Yeah. And it makes the vehicle not affordable. And what's the cost of this? It's $250,000. Usually on most sites we've studied, we're 40 to 60% cheaper than other um, shorter services. Okay. And now it's ready for, for sale. That's People awesome. People can actually have it. Very cool. Well, I'll write you a check after we're done here. So you guys just announced at CES this new kind of phase for BMW. Tell me a little bit about it. Um, we're working since many years in the field of automation. The task of observing the car belongs still to the driver. Right. That the driver is observing and intervening if necessary. Is it new technology or is it just connecting the dots of technologies you already that, had? That, that's a good question. We are connecting different technologies we already had. We have a front camera which is detecting the lanes and we connect that what we had, the adaptive cruise control system, to this complete system now. We know that an autonomous car will come to in critical situations. A box is falling down a truck, an yeah. uh, aqua planning uh, spot will, will arrive or uh, you have any obstacle. In, in, in front of you. It cannot wait until the driver takes over. Right. It has to do the job. And that is what we, what we do with this car. We control every critical situation. We can bring it to an artificial drift. We can control it in the drift. We can do it much better than, than a normal driver. Really? It knows how to steer, how to brake, how to accelerate or decelerate. It, it can keep a complete instable situation over a very long time. This is the last part, the last building block of a highly automated car. So in December you made an announcement of having a Fusion that was going to be essentially autonomous. Tell me a little bit about that. We took a hybrid Fusion and we added some advanced <laughs> sensing to it and some really powerful computers and algorithms to make it so that it could actually be an automated driving vehicle. There's a lot of existing sensors on the vehicle. We have the forward-looking camera that we do lane keep assist with. We have forward-looking radars that we do adaptive cruise control and forward collision warning. We have ultrasonics around the vehicle that we do parking with. And you know we also have blind spot radars that are in the rear quarters of the vehicle looking at the blind spots. So we took all those sensors and we added to them four of uh, the Velodyne LiDARs on the roof, which are a very advanced sensor. Uh, it's really interesting the way you guys came about with this, working with the University of Michigan and State Farm. Why collaborate with them? Why bring them into this process? Well, University of Michigan, mainly because they have a real world-class robotics team there. When we put that together in a vehicle, we take a lot of data. And then when we start to analyze that data and understand where are the benefits and where are the risks, that's where a company like State Farm really adds some, some value. Talk to me a little bit about LiDAR. This is a really interesting technology. And why did you guys decide to use this? It actually 
is a technology that, that really got us started in the DARPA Grand Challenges, where it was a very key sensor. It basically uses a bunch of lasers that spin around and do ranging. So you send out a laser beam and you wait for it to return, and the amount of time it takes to get to a target in fact sure. tells you how far away it is. You get a very sort of immersive experience of what's around the vehicle. Yeah, it kind of looks like the Predator's vision. And you guys also uh, have vehicle to vehicle. That's kind of a separate component to this. It's basically advanced Wi-Fi and GPS where vehicles tell each other where they are and where they're going. So we're gonna do a scenario that's gonna be in this direction. It's gonna be in that left-hand lane there. We're gonna uh, have this lead vehicle cut out at the last moment, exposing the stop target to us. And a radar or camera system would have trouble picking this up because it's out of line of sight. But with V to V, it's always in line of sight to us. That's awesome. That is something that we can't do with cameras or radars or LIDARs sure. because if we have a building in between us, yeah. The LIDAR's bouncing off and mapping the building. It doesn't know what's on the other exactly, side. Exactly, right. Yeah. So it's a sensor that gives us better knowledge of what's around us. Wow. And I saw it going brr, yep. brr, same yep. kind of thing. So you, so you get a bit of a trace on the heads-up display from right to left, yeah. uh, kind of instructing you where, where you want I feel good about that. <laughs> yep. All right, so uh, we're here with Bjorn from Audi. He pretty much invented autonomous driving at Audi. He wouldn't say that, but. So we're in a really beautiful A7 here that has taken essentially an entire trunk's worth of computers. You guys have condensed it into a shoebox. All right, so what happens is we're in this condition here. Up on the screen, it says piloted driving available. Please press button to activate. Yeah. Almost like cruise control. And I can just take it up on that offer. Basically cool. take my hands off the wheel, take my feet off the pedals. So your feet are off the gas, it's off the brake, your hands are off the steering wheel. Yeah. From that, it'll determine where your eyes are. It'll look for your eyelids, whether they're closing or not. I'll just show you what's going to happen if I go to sleep. Okay. Because I'm going to close my eyes on the highway in traffic right now for 10 seconds. Okay. I'm keeping my head immobile. Yep. There you go, it says driver attention. Uh, and it's giving me those 10 seconds. And it's getting more and more vehement about it. Please take back the driving task. And if I didn't, Whoa, it, it will come to a, to a stop. And it will put out a distress call to the authorities. You can work on an autonomous research car, and that's cool. Yep. But I want autonomous technology for the customer. And we at Audi, we want you to have fun while driving. That's why we're building these sexy cars. How do you see the future as far as autonomous vehicles are concerned? You can imagine autonomous vehicles in, in, in many different situations. For autonomous parking, you stay at the entrance of a an, of an parking house and say goodbye to your car. And then you, you whistle and the car come back. <laughs> That'd be nice. Just <laughs> like horses as, from yes, a long yes, time like, ago, like, right? Like horses. And, and we, really, we call, it, we call it the age mode. The age mode would be you become a passenger in your own car yeah. and the car is, is, is carrying you home like a, like a horse did it 100 years ago. So people speculate it could be 5, 10, even 20 years before we see fully autonomous vehicles on the road. But the growth we've seen in just one year has us convinced that the technology is almost there. So the question is, when are they going to let us flip the switch and take our hands off the wheel? All right, for Translogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time. <laughs>